the sons of Christian. And then the rainbow appeared in Genesis chapter 9. He said, as long as the rainbow is there, it will be a sign of my covenant with you, Amen. of my promise that I will revert, and I will think again before I do anything. And then he called a man with the name of Abram from the house of his father, the heathen nation. And he said, I will bless you. I will multiply you and I will multiply your descendants and they will become numerous as the stars in the sky and in the sand of the sea soul. And I will bless your descendants and their children shall possess the gates of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And their children shall possess the gates of the enemy. So when God visits a family, a husband or a wife, He's visiting not only their children, but He's visiting the fourth, third, and the second, and the fourth generation. I mean, I'm for a generational blessing, not a generational cursing. When I preach, I'm a blessing preacher. Amen. I'm a preacher that says that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God will lift you up and He will restore you fully. Yes. But the devil has stolen from you, He will give it back sevenfold. Amen. You just have to go to the enemy. And he, he made an umbrella blessing in, in uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28. He said, I will bless you. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. You will be blessed going out and you will be blessed coming in. Amen. When you go to work, when you go to business, when you go to church, it doesn't matter where you are going because God says you will be blessed. Amen. You will carry a blessing, you will carry the anointing, you will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit because God said it will be so. Amen. Brothers of Joseph trying to kill him. In fact, they, they, he will be better off if they kill him. That we tell him that. But they decided not to kill him, but to put him in a pit. And then the Midianites, according to the word of Genesis, came and they brought him, sold him into slavery. There was, there was no, there was no go. But because God's hand was upon him, he became a blessing in the house of Potiphar. And God lifted up him up to the place of the highest and the most important slave in the household. Some, something happened again and the devil then said, they thought it is now finished with you and he threw Joseph in the but again. But God has started a plan for him. So God raised him up after a few years out of prison, a prison and into the palace. The second most important job, Prime Minister of Egypt, the wisest man in the country. Come on. Linked up with the richest man in the country. Every time when people came to Egypt to buy food, Pharaoh gained some ground and a lot of money. Dollars upon dollars and rents and everything. So the Bible said he was the richest man in all of Egypt. Belonged to one guy whose name was Ramesses Pharaoh. And Joseph asked this question of Pharaoh, can I bring my father to Egypt? And Pharaoh said, by all means you can bring him. In fact, even the best part of the country to live in. And the Bible said when Jacob entered the courts of Pharaoh, he blessed Pharaoh. And then they have the little chat and Pharaoh said, gave them portion to live. And then we know the history when the place came and everything was dark and uh, the frogs and the uh, whatever plague there was in Egypt never appeared in caution. No rain, no blood in water, no flies, no death of the firstborn. There was a continuous blessing. And the Bible says when Jacob went out in from the presence of Pharaoh, he blessed him again. The principle of a double blessing. Beloved, when we become a blessing to others, God will bless us. Amen. 
I want us to say to this line, don't wait to be a blessing. Yes. Or don't wait to be blessed. Amen. Become a blessing. Amen. Every time when we come together, imagine we just we just speak the blessing of God over, over of our friends and our family. And when we come home, we just leave the blessing there. Because if the man of peace in the house, the peace of God will remain in that house. Hallelujah. This way, this why uh, God uh, said to Moses, I want you to bless the people. And Moses uh, stood on the highest mountain, the mountain of the Lord in Israel, round about two to three thousand meters above sea level. And he pronounced the Lord shall make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. He shall make his face to shine you and give you grace. Hallelujah. That's the blessing. And that same blessing is reverberating through the ages. This is why we share the blessing that the Abednego went in the fiery furnace and the soldiers were dead. They could be blessed and the fourth man released in the fire. Hallelujah. There's a time when the fire will be upon you, but the blessing of the living God will sustain you. Can I get the name of the house? The blessing of God will sustain you. Amen. Oh, this now I shall bear my peace and Grace of, 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 of the Lord, our the, of the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you. In every book that he written, he pronounced the grace and the benediction, the blessing of God upon the church. And that's where I want to connect today. I want to talk about seeding the cloud. Come on. Amen. About seeding the cloud. Now in the 1940s there was a, a Nobel Prize winner uh, by the name of Mir. He and his friend Schaefer went up the slope to ski and said on the ascent today, Mir looked at his right hand and he saw the cumulus cloud hanging there. But because there was something wrong according to him, he investigated the problem. There was a snow flock here and snow was falling there, but not enough flow that warranted the cloud that was that was in there. I always said to to uh, to Shaper, I think we must we must uh, do research in on this phenomenon. And when he came down, Shaper that was a, a, a high school dropout. But he was crafty with his hands and he could build a lot of stuff and he, and he actually lived for that moment of so doing ex experiments and so on. So he ordered a, 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 a freezer from General Electric and he, he rectified the, 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 the freezer laid out with black velvet and he, he turned it down until to 10 degrees beneath the freezing point. And it blew into the freezer and it created a cloud because warm air will hover, will hang uh, above the coat of the, of the freezer. So it blew in the freezer, there's the cloud. And then he started to experiment. He wanted to create snow in the freezer. And for a few months, this experiment went on and he, he almost failed because it heated up. It heated up in June. So he said to himself, I must continue and I must try to preserve this cloud. It was in the freezer now. And then he went and bought dry ice. And when he threw the dry ice into the freezer, some of the ice just fell into the cloud. And in the freezer, the cloud burst and snow fell from the cloud. And he was so excited now they have to scale this experiment. And there was a certain day in November, they were gathering um, on the same spot where the cloud um, hang for quite some time. Um, for, uh, for a few few months and so on and so on. And they hired a, a airplane and they, with a bag of, of ice, dry ice. And um, as people Oh, they want to witness this guy making snow today. And he flew into the cloud and he threw the dry ice 
all from the plain. And the people said, it was like the cloud exploded and snow fall. For the radius of 40 kilometers snow in Pittsburgh in the 1940s. And the reporter said today, safe and greater snow, who knows, maybe even more for the water next week. So the idea of seed, of cloud seeding, is not a strange idea. When there's wildfires, people try to see the cloud, the mandu, and Afrikaans is, 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 is a whole food. It's a very simple word. We don't use that word uh, very often in Afrikaans, but it's whole uh, food. So when it's, but there's wildfires and there's clouds, they try to see the clouds so that the rain uh, can fall to the ground. Just turn with me quickly to the Bible in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. The Bible says, invest your money in foreign trade and one of these days, verse chapter 1, 11 chapter 1, he says this, um, 11 chapter 1, invest your money in foreign trade and one of these days you will make a profit. But to investment in several places, put your investment in several places, many places even, because you never know what kind of bad luck you are going to have in this world. No matter which direction, in three, a three falls, it will lie there. Where it fell, it's a principle. If we come to the end of our life and we, we, are, we are dead, we will do nothing more. Amen. That's why it's so important to do everything for God now whilst we are alive. We must do everything that we can for God while we are alive. When the clouds are full, another law of nature. When, cloud, when the clouds are full, it rains. When the clouds are full, it rains. The cloud does not retain the water. Water just fell from the clouds and it rains, it drizzles, it showers, it snows often, but rain will come down when clouds are full. Yes. Amen. And that's, make it, that's what makes me excited today. That's what really energizes me when I preach uh, about blessing, about stirring and seeding your cloud. So when your clouds are full, rain will come to you. When your spirits of clouds are full, you will receive a blessing, even a double full blessing. You will carry the blessing. You will carry the anointing. You will carry the fire if you seed your cloud right. Amen. When you seed your cloud properly. Isaiah says, speak to your cloud, or speak to the cloud, and tell the cloud, give your rain. Amen. In other words, we have the capacity to speak to the clouds hanging and hovering above us. We can speak to the spiritual cloud and see it now it must rain, but rain is not coming. You have this capacity in the spirit to speak to the clouds and say to the cloud, give your rain now in the name of Expect rain to fall. Amen. It's senseless. Are you with me? Amen. No matter. Verse 4. If you wait under the wind and the weather are just right, you will never plant anything and never, and never harvest anything. God made everything and you can do no, can no more understand what does the then uh, what he does. When then you understand how new life begins in the womb of a pregnant woman, do your planting in the morning and in the evening too. You never know where it will grow and uh, all well or whether one planting will do better than the other. The principle here is don't look at favorable, favorable conditions mm. to on. be a blessing. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Don't look at favorable conditions to be of use in the house of God. Come on. Every day in the house of God is a favorable position. Yes. It's a favorable moment. A favorable moment. It's a moment when God can use you. It's a moment when God can turn you around and make you a blessing unto people, even unto nations. Yes. Amen. 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 So yeah. yeah. 
when a farmer sits down in his house and he opens his curtains and see the day the wind is blowing. I cannot go out and sow today. Solomon said, you, you will never harvest anything. Oh, it's raining today. I'm not going to work. You will, you will not receive a salary. At the end of the month, you will lose your job. When it comes to the things of God, we must be in tune with the Spirit of God. We must be in line with the Spirit of God. That's what Paul says in, in, in Galatians chapter 5. He says we must walk in step with the Spirit of God. The same way that the army marches. When you look to the side, you see only one man. Because they are in step, Amen. in line. When they turn around, I, I never I never did the army. I never uh, did any, um, what do you call it? But I love it when I see the army marching and doing this stuff. You ever see a video clip of the ladies in China? When they do this, one hand in the other side. Paul says you must be in a similar way. You must be in line with the Spirit. When you turn, the Spirit turns. When the Spirit turns, you turn. And people will not see the difference. Because you are in line, in step with the Spirit of God. Amen. Can we preach now? That is the purpose. God is about to do great things and marvelous things in your life. God is about to lift you up and catapult you into your new season. Amen. Where you will be a blessing to others and to your family. You need you don't curse anymore. You don't you don't sigh when people say, Ah, dear, what a fear are you? No, no, you bless. Amen. You speak words of affirmation. Because God is putting His word in your mouth. I know a man with the name of Elijah. He said to Ahab after his victory over the the, 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 the prophets of Baal. He said to Ahab, said to Ahab, I want you to eat and drink because I'm hearing the sound of rushing wind. I'm hearing the sound of a thunderous rainstorm that is coming our way for three years and a half. It never rained in the land, and because of His word, it never.
But put your trust in the Lord, the God of Jacob. In fact, God told him not to acquire the strength of horses. But now when the rain came and the thunderstorm broke out, the power of the horses was not enough. The Lord said to Jeremiah, said to Jeremiah chapter 12, I will make you to live on the flat plains of the Jordan. When the Jordan flooded the plains, we will come down there with little wife. And I will make you to contend not with men, but with horses. In other words, it's a supernatural endowment of the power of God. You live when nobody else tries to live or succeed, and you will not run with men, but you will run race against the strength of horse. God says, I will empower you. I will empower you more than you can ever know. Nothing seeds of a clouds like prayer. Come on, come on. If you want to see a breakthrough, I think you must come down on your knees. Amen. If you want to see a breakthrough, I think you must spend some time in prayer. I think Prophet Nikki, a few years back, when we were managed to get a fire prophetic conference, he talked about pacing your prayers. He said, we are so familiar and accustomed by, by timing our prayers on our watches and the length of our prayers. But this is the, 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 the promise of breakthrough. But it will be a desperation in your spirit and you need to pace your prayers. And as you pace your prayers, you become more urgent more urgent about making your request, your request known to God. So prayer is one of the, the, the most important things. Do you know that you have the power of the miracle that you so desperately need right now in your hand? Can I explain to you? When the angel of God visited Joshua, he said, when tomorrow I want you to go to the town, to the Jordan, and you will cross the Jordan. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Joshua chapter 3. You will cross the Jordan. Right. And then God said to, to Joshua, I want you to tell the Levites to put their feet come on, come on. in the water. Yeah. And that's all that God said. I want you to tell the Levites to put their feet in the water while carrying the ark of the Lord. And then the leader, the leaders went to the camp and they, 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 they give the direction to the people. They tell the people, tomorrow I want you, we want you to follow the Levites with the ark of the covenant, but we want you to keep a distance between them. According to the calculations, that distance is between 800 meters to one kilometer between the, the, the Levites and the people falling why? Because the Bible says the leader said, because you did not walk this road. You never traveled this road before. Not yesterday or the day before. I want to implore you. It's important to leave, to hear, to hear and listen to the direction of the leaders. Somebody has walked the road, traveled the road, traversed the road that you did not do. So it's important to hear the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that comes from them. So the Bible says, keep the distance almost one kilometer behind the people of the Ark of the Covenant. Now the Bible said, in our time, during spring, the Jordan flooded its banks. Again, if you calculate carefully, you will see. The measurement of the water at the Jordan was about 800 to one to one to eight hundred to a thousand meters, one kilometer. Again, so when the people came to the river, they saw this massive river, this water mess. 
that is almost impossible to cross because the river was in flood. It was fast, it was deep, it was quickly. But God said to Joshua, tell the Levites to put their feet in the water. I submit to you, beloved, when you come to the massive water, when you come to your struggle, when you come to your storm, and you see there's no crossing, I want you to listen to God. Put your feet in the ground. We like we do. We want to see God is opening up this river now. And same as the, when, when Egypt was behind Israel, and Moses took his staff, and he, and he, and he, and he, and he put it in the water, the sea part, amen. amen. And then went through it, dry ground. The same when, when Elijah returned, when Elijah was taken up and the mantle fell on the ground, he took the mantle and he hid the, the water and the river part. But now it's a different story. God says, put your feet in the water. He's actually saying, I want you to perform the miracle yourself. Oh. This is what God did not say. Joseph was telling them, the water will heat up. Come on, come on. The water will heat up. And the rest will flow to the Dead Sea. It will become a bank here. And you will go through it on dry ground. And as you go, pick up a stone. Because with that, that stone, you must build an altar unto the Lord for remembrance as a, as a continual remembrance to the next generation. Yeah. God is saying to you, I want you to put your feet in the water and it will open up before you. Amen. You must speak your glory God Amen. into effect. Come on. Yeah. Don't wait for God to open the water. Yeah, so Don't wait for God to open the water. Can I say it again? Don't wait for God to open the water. Right. Somebody's not listening to me. Can I say it again? Don't wait for God to open it, to open the water. You just step into the water. You just step into the water. Hallelujah. You just step into the water. Amen. Isn't it with miracles? We must trust God. Amen. On His word. And most of the time, the word is so simple, almost stupid, and we don't want to do it. And we don't want to do it. And we prolong. We prolong. Oh, there we go. Do you know Caleb? Moses picked him as one of the spies to go into Canaan and spy on the land, the people, the strength of the people, and so on and so forth. So according to Jewish tradition, Apostle, when Caleb went into the promised land as a spy, he broke off from the rest, and he visited Hebron. I don't know how long, I don't know what he did there, but he visited Hebron, and then he came back with the spies. And they, then they had the report. And the, the ten says, no, we, we will not make it. We will not make it. We are dead. The people are huge as giants. For they are part in the descendants of Amalek. Yeah, they are big people. But Joseph Caleb said, we can do it because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is with us. I submit to you, when God is with you, you can do everything. Amen. If God is with you, you can do everything. After they fought and the land was now distributed to all the clans, Caleb came to Joshua and said, I want you to give me my portion, my inheritance. Afrikaans said to my boy, he said, me the Bergland. Give me the mountainous area that Moses, the man of God, to me. And that was Hebron. 400 years ago, they buried Abram at Hebron. If you can think of it, just imagine 
They went to the area where they buried Abraham. And they said to himself, I want to have this blessing. I want to be part of this blessing. Because the anointing don't die. Come on. Blessings Amen. don't die. Amen. Can I say it again? Anointing don't die. Amen. Blessings Come don't on. die. We, we, we read it in, the, in, in, in Kings where they threw the, the, the body of Elijah into the tomb where the, the dead body touches uh, the, the, the skeleton, the, the, the character of the lake, but to it was uh, that man came alive because the anointing in the bones of Elijah awakened and resurrected the man. The anointing in you can resurrect every dead thing in your life right now. If you only see the clouds I pray today, so Said himself, I want this anointing. I will be paid by the sentence. And for my people from this land, it will become mine. And now, fast forward 400 years after that incident, there was a man, a son, Rabbis, as the Bible described him, and Samuel anointed him as king over Israel. And then when he became king, and he brought And he brought it became his first, became his first sign. There was still an anointing. There was a stake in the ground. So when we see the cloud through prayer, through generosity, we must take hold of it in the same spirit as created it. When he first the hero, he said to himself, I will have this. Because this is the anointing. This place is anointed. Abram died here. Abram was blessed. Amen. We are part of this blessing still. Somebody said the other day that God cannot give Abram a reward yet because his children, his blessing is not fulfilled yet. Amen. When God summoned the whole earth and and in the, the, the last days will, will be rolled up as a tent. Then only Abraham can stand with us and receive his fullness of his reward. Paul says we are the blessing of Abraham. In Christ we are blessed because he's on the seed in the Lord of Abraham. Yeah. And so are we. Amen? Yeah. And so are we. So yeah, if we want to see the miracle, we want to see God is healing me, God is blessing me financially, or relationally, relationally, or familial, and every area of your life, if you want to see the grace of God, see the cloud. Amen. Through prayer, through generosity, and putting the stake in it. Put in the bed. Get it up. Make the claim. It's yours. And perform the miracle. Amen? And perform the miracle. Put your feet. Put your feet in the water. Don't let the vastness and the greatness of the water or your struggle or your whatsoever intimidate you. Don't let it happen. Because God is on your side. Amen. God is about to love you. Amen. God is about to love you. You are. Hallelujah. Zechariah, when the people was, were taken into captivity, they experienced a lot of trouble, a lot of heartache, pain, and rejection. And then he said this thing He said, Don't gloat over me. Don't laugh over me, but don't rejoice over me, my enemy. Because God is my light. Even if I sit in darkness, God is my light. Even if I fall, I will rise. You must read it right. I told my congregation, repeat after me. I can be quick and fast sometimes. Even if I fall, I rise. Because there's no, there's no pause. You don't lie down 
It's, an, it's, it's one action. Even if I fall there right because God is with me, God is my light, He will not gloat over me. There will, no, there will be no time to rejoice over me because what the devil tries to cause and to bring about in your life will oh. have effect because He will bring you for your rise. He will bring you for your rise because there's no, you are not lying down. You are not lying down. You don't lick your boots because God is strengthening you. Hallelujah. God is strengthening
ติบุตรทุกทุกคนเป็นสิ่งที่ฉันสุดยอดขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณคลาสที่คุณจะรับในพระเจ้าในที่นี้ไม่มีความรุนแรงเป็นสิ่งที่ดีที่สุดที่เราจะรับขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบคุณขอบเป็นสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งส